Great. Now, when it comes to communication, there's a science of communication. The science is built around rules. Rules. People who have communicated in the past, you will know we're talking about legacy of communication here, or of language. We have what those that have done it in the past, what they've learned, how they have excelled. You know, we have different people that are com communicating. We've seen Hitler moving people by communication. We've seen, uh, uh, what's the name of uh, the Russian guy? Uh, remind me, the Russian guy, Russian, uh, what, what, who was there before in World War II? Was it Stanley that was there in Russia? I think. Uh, I'm just All right, it might be, it might be. But, but you've seen people like that. We've seen Roosevelt. We've seen... Uh, J.F. Kennedy, you've heard Obama also in recent times speak, you know, there are things we can learn from all of these people, right? Right. And what you learn from them becomes the rules, the science of communication, right? Now, that is just head, your head is full of that, right? That is application by the head. When it now comes to you having Applying that to your own communication, you, you then need to bring in creativity to it. And when you talk about creativity, creativity is not a thing of the head, it's a thing of the heart, right? Creativity comes with the heart. I'm saying two hearts, so I hope I'm pronouncing them well. Science and ART, heart. To get the ART, you need the H-E-A-R-T, right? H-E-A-R-T produces the creativity that comes from the ART, right? So when it comes to the ART, you need your, not just your head, you need your heart to it. You need to marry the subject, marry what you are doing. That's where you embody what you are doing. That's when it becomes not just something you are doing, it becomes your person, you married into it, right? Then you also need what they call God, because God then means that if you don't have God, you will not be able to do it because God means you are going against the established norm, right? You are going, you are, you, are, you are putting yourself out there, right? To say, I also exist. And, you know, God means you're going against re possible rejection, right? And obviously you have to do the hard work. That's where your hands come in, right? Having summarized all of that, let's go into the, into the slides itself. So uh, TDJ brings up this, uh, this quote by Thomas Edison, you know, as saying that irrespective of the inspiration you have, when it comes to communication, there's still the hard work of preparation, right? There's still the hard work of preparation, right? I'll give you my example. I've always been a spiritual person, you know? For as much as I can know, I've always had a sense of God in my life. And even when I became born again, I mean, I could do a lot of things out of inspiration. You know, I could, there was, my spirit was far more evolved than my head was, right? So out of some things I could do in the spur of the moment that I also, I, that I amazed my own self, that when I want to do it, recreate it, I'm not able to get to the same level of performance. But if you catch me at the right time, my spirit just gets to do it at a level that, is, that outstands myself, right? So for years, what I had done, tried to do for years was to let my head catch up with my spirit. Because my spirit was up there, but my head was down here, right? And what I've done for years is trying to get my head to catch up with my spirit. And I'm about there right now. But that's taking me years to do. Because somehow my spirit was far, was endowed in a place where my heart, my head wasn't, right? And like, again, I've, I've given an example some probably two, two times before where I've had incidents of me being called to, to minister, right? And I knew the subject I was supposed to teach. I had the idea in my head, flowing in my head. I had the scriptures flowing in my head. But somehow I couldn't just put all the scriptures together. Linking them was a challenge. And like I say, I always try to preach from my heart, not from my head. Because I, anything I preach, I want it to be true in eternity. So I, I, in a sense, when I'm preaching, I try to, as it were, link up with the Holy Spirit. It's like a deep war inside of me. I'm just trying to link 
with the Holy Spirit and make sure I'm saying what I believe he's saying through me, not just what I'm reasoning. Because if I reason it, I might not necessarily be saying the truth. It might be true for today, but tomorrow something might just come up and disannul it, right? So my aim, my heart desire, what I press on for is that anything that I say, I want it to be true in eternity. I want it to be something that the Holy Spirit is saying through me. Therefore, it can never be a temporal truth, right? So that, that's why I spend a lot of hours in preparing, right? Because that's, that's all I'm trying to get. I'm trying to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I want to be that whatever I'm saying is what I believe is saying through me. Therefore, the truth, it will never be in doubt. But to do that takes a lot of work. <laughs> you know, and that's what TDJ was trying to say here. He's, say, he's saying that genius is 1% inspiration, but 99% perspiration, right? You get the inspiration, but a lot of work you have to do to, to give foundation to the inspiration because you're going to be talking to human beings, right? You have the inspiration is in heaven. You have human beings at this level. You have to link the two together, right? And that's what we're talking about when we talk about the process of preaching, is getting the message you are receiving from on high to the level that the human beings you are talking to can understand what you are saying. Right, right? Experience does all, it makes a lot of difference, you know, to you, to, to you as a communicator. See, I grew up as a shy person. And shyness and communication don't go together. Right? Today, people wonder, <laughs> was this guy ever shy? He doesn't look like a shy person. But then, I'll tell you the truth, I grew up as a shy person. You know, uh, I used to, I, I work for Chevron, right? And we work on, in the field and we have to give reports in the morning. And one time, so they told me to give reports from the field. And I was like, out, I, was talk, I was out of the body talking because I was just picking everything I crammed in my head, you know, because I had to quickly rise to that occasion to do that. You know, I can just remember those times, you know, I just laugh at myself today. Right, because it was like it wasn't an, it wasn't something I'm used to, right? And I'm an introvert, right? I know a lot of people don't believe I am an introvert. I am an introvert, but I don't look like one because of maturity, right? Uh, so I'm not one that is that wants to put myself out there for stardom. Hey, I'm the reigning person, you know. If you know anything about an introvertic personality, you know. We don't necessarily want to be playing to the gallery. We want to be right, but we don't want necessarily to be showing up. Oh, because you see, we, an introvert does not get his energy in, in public. He, he gets his energy in solitude, right? So, but it's taken a lot of years for me to understand myself, to be able to live at a higher level than I used to live, right? But, um, so when you're trying to get the message, right, experience, all of what I've said here is talking about experience. Experience has made me a better person, right? You see me, I don't even think too much about the message. Even though I do a lot of preparation, but I come, I don't even think about the audience, why? Right? Because I've learned also in giving a message, the way to kill stage fright is not to be focused too much about how the audience see you, but we focus about what you have to give to them, right? If your focus is on what I have to bless these people, stage fright goes away. But for as long as you're thinking about what they are thinking about you, oh, the shoe I wore, oh, the, my, the shirt I wore, oh, they're older than me, they're younger than me, ah, ah, you'll have stage fright. Like they say, public spirit speaking is probably next to the fear of death, right? It's all about focus. See, I can tell you all of this because of experience, right? That's not to say uh, they still not, I still don't have challenges. I'm just saying that those challenges are reduced over time because of experience also. And because also I'm building myself to have something to say. See, the, there's a power that comes from having something to say. There's a power that comes from understanding your audience and knowing how to reach them where they are, 